The National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each week at this time. Now, the case of the infiltrating agents. Field Office, American Embassy, Buenos Aires. To Counter Spy Headquarters, Washington. Urgent attention, Mr. Harding personally. Have just learned that Ivor Sanderson, inactive here for the past two years, has booked passage on 7 p.m. plane north. From Jones, Counter Spy Field Office, Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, to Mr. Harding, Washington. Believe man answering description of Ivor Sanderson got off plane here this morning. Harding to all Southern field offices. 24-hour alert ordered until further notice. Am flying to Laredo, Texas. Will make specific assignments upon arrival. Okay, Pepita. Plenty okay. How many times I have to tell you my name is not Pepita? Who is this Pepita? Some other girl you like better, no, huh? No, no, Pepita, you're the only girl in the world. <laughs> At least the only girl in Nuevo Laredo. Well, bottoms up. Harry, I think you have too much already. No, no, it's never too much. Bottoms up. Oh. Harry, you take drinks too all of a sudden. Oh, come on, Harry, sweetheart, baby, we go. Go? Where? What's the matter with this place? We go home. Oh, no, no, Pepita, I'm having too much fun. I like Mexico. I don't want to go back to Dallas. There's not this much fun in Dallas. You don't go back to Dallas. I mean, my home. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say so? Huh? <laughs> hey, wait a... Mozo! Si, senor. Dame la cuenta. Siete pesos. Seven dollars. Si. Okay. Okay, here, 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 yeah, but keep the change, keep it, I'm a sport. Uh, muchas gracias, senor, muchas gracias. All right. Come, Harry. You know, you're a sweet kid, Pepita. You're an awful sweet kid. The name is not Pepita. You're still a sweet kid. Oh, come, you lean on me. I will open it the door. That's a good girl. You open it the door, hmm? Yeah. Okay, come. You know, Pepita... I'm going to miss you when I go back to Dallas. Well, you don't go back till tomorrow. I'm going to miss you anyway. Yeah, here's my car. Oh, we don't have to drive to my house. Oh, we don't? No, I live right next door to the saloon. Hey, that's nice. <laughs> that's convenient, too, huh? <laughs> right here. We go in. Oh, that's good. Uh, come in, Harry. Ah, it's dark. It's dark in here, Pepita. <laughs> I will turn it on the light. Ah, it's better. Much better. Hey, look, a nice little old comfortable chair. <laughs> hey, isn't that a wonderful sight? Nice little old easy chair. Harry? Good night, Pepita. Harry? Mm. Harry, wake up. Mm. Harry! Harry! Okay, sleep. Yeah, all right. Ah, is it all right? Yes, yes, all right. I wonder, does he have much money with him? He should. Never mind how much money he's got. Leave it. Car. Leave the money alone. All right, but it's a shame. Ah, here. 
Here are the keys to his car. Good. The car is big Oldsmobile, right outside. License Texas JW360. Uh, stay here. I'll be back in a little while. Mr. Sanderson? Mr. Sanderson? Yes, here. Come on, Carl, get out. But mustn't we drive the car to the garage? That has been the usual procedure. Get out? Yes, all right, get out. We do everything fine for months and months, perfect. And along comes word from Buenos Aires, and poof, everything has changed. Nothing is good. Why didn't you remain in Buenos Aires? Because our superiors believe this is too important for you to handle. Too important for me to handle? Huh? What have I been handling that was not important? Yes, but not as important as this. In five or six hours, the man will wake up. We must have the car back by then so he can be on his way. If we must take off the tires and put the stuff inside as usual, we'll have to get it to the garage quickly. No, no, the merchandise does not go into the tires. What's the matter with the tires? We've been putting it in the tires all along. I don't like what you've been doing all along, Carl. Please, you forget my contribution. Is that so? That is so. It was me, me, Carl, who thought of finding these tourists, having them innocently smuggle the material across the border in their cars. It was me, me alone. You know, this job is too much for you. Oh, now something big comes along, but it's too much. This is no bigger than usual. <laughs> You aren't sent from Buenos Aires for something no bigger than usual, I know. Do you? Of course I know. What, for instance? It is plans in microfilm to the organization to infiltrate the area of the new hydrogen bomb planned in South Carolina. Plans for our people to establish themselves as residents and get employment in the construction work. And later, when construction is finished in the plant itself, isn't that right? <laughs> Very right. You see, I know. That's too bad, Carl. Oh, Mr. Sanderson. No. I'm sorry, Carl. No, please. I, I didn't know. I only guessed. Well, you guessed too well. Please, then. don't kill me, please. <laughs> <laughs> a little later or a little sooner, it didn't make any difference, Carl. You were not to be trusted. Here. Here are the keys. The car is ready. Put the keys back in his pocket. Who are you? What is Carl? Carl has been transferred. Transferred? Yes, transferred to another area. Put the keys in the man's pocket. Everything is ready. To Braden, Countess by Headquarters, Washington. Advise you handle Honolulu and San Francisco matters yourself. Don't know how long I'll be here. No break as yet. Case still requires my personal attention. Harding. Yes, I'll be right with you. Signed, David Harding, Countess by Temporary Field Office, Laredo, Texas. Yeah, that uh, Oldsmobile with the Texas plates JW360 just left the Mexican side and started across the International Bridge. Oh, good. You want to step over to the window, Chief? Uh. Yeah. Here it comes, Mr. Harding. Oh, I think it ought to have a regular customs examination right down the line. Okay, I'll take care of it myself. Make it look regular, just in case we're being watched. Right. Here it comes. Oh, I'll wait inside. Tell the driver I want to see. Him. Right. Good morning, sir. What's good about it? Ooh. <laughs> Rough night? Rough. It was brutal. My bags are in the trunk. I've got nothing to declare. I didn't buy anything. Uh, nothing at all to declare? Nothing except what I ate and drank. Huh. I'll open it up. Uh, give me the keys, mister. I'll open it. The man inside wants to see you. About what? Well, you'll have to ask him. One standing right inside the door. All right. Did you want to see me? Hello, Mr. Harding. Hello, Peter. How'd it go? As expected. This girl, Pepita, picked me up in the cafe. We had a few drinks. When she thought I was loaded, she took me to her place. When it looked like I passed out, she called in a friend named Carl. Yeah. They lifted the car keys off me, and Carl left. Five or six hours later, she returned my car keys. 
So our suspicions are confirmed. I think that's been the pattern all the while, Chief. What do you think they hid in the car? I don't know. I didn't want to make too close an examination. Well, we ought to be able to find it. Anything new on Sanderson? Nothing other than we're afraid he slipped into this country. Mm -hmm. So start out for Dallas, Peters, and make those stops we talked about for lunch, for gas, anything. Well, someplace between here and Dallas, they should try to lift the car from you. And that's when we nail them. I hope so. Now, as insurance, we'll use the alternating method in staying with you. Somebody in front, somebody behind all the time. Right. I'll try to be in contact with you from time to time. All right, sir. Everything's okay. Yeah. Thanks. Here are your keys. They pulled out the upholstery padding in the backrest of the rear seat, Chief. Found a roll of microfilm. Microfilm? So that's it. Did you substitute it in the car? Yes, sir. Good. Well, Peters, I think you spent enough time here. All right. So long. Thanks. So long. He's got a dangerous job. You don't know how dangerous. Those people would just as soon kill him as look at him. We've been after this ring for a year now. We haven't made a dent yet. That is until now. That's a pretty clever gimmick of theirs, storing the films in tourists' cars. Yes, it's clever, but it's up to us to be a little more clever. Let's find out what's in those microfilms. <laughs> Fill her up? Yep. How's the oil and water? They're okay. Just fill her up. Any sign of them, Peters? I didn't see a thing, Chief. I just heard from both your follower and your leader. They didn't see any sign of them either. We developed that microfilm we found in the car. Big stuff? Bigger than we figured. That 400 square mile tract of land up around Aiken, South Carolina. Hey, that's where the government just announced it's going to build a hydrogen bomb plant. Exactly. The microfilm has orders to agents in a dozen or more states to get rooted around that project, even before it started. When the call goes out for workers, those agents will be right among them. So I don't think they'll let your car get too far out of their sight, Peter. They must be around someplace. Maybe they have the setup spotted. No, I don't think so. You think they're waiting till I get closer to Dallas? Are hey, you getting a customer? Yeah. Uh, just a minute, ma'am. Be with you in a minute. All right. Well, there you are. Filled up. Okay. You sure the oil and water okay? Yeah, they're okay. Uh, please. I'm in an awful hurry. Well, but I... this gentleman if here... the lady's in such a hurry, go right ahead. I've got plenty of time. Okay. Fill her up, ma'am? No, I don't need any gasoline. There's something wrong with my car, and I've just got to get to San Antonio. Well, we'll take a look. Yeah, it's hot, all right. It's boiling. What is it, the fan belt? No, fan belt seems to be okay. I was just driving along and it started to steam all of a sudden. Well, let's check the water. Oh, that's it. No water? Can't see any. Mm. You got a leak all right, a bad one there. See how it's dripping down on the pan there? Oh, will that take long? Well, long enough. Got to find the leak, then I got to fix it. Oh, dear, I've got to be in San Antonio by 1 o'clock. <laughs> Well, with this car you want, I got two other jobs sitting in the garage back there. It'd be at least 1.30 before I can get to it. Is there a bus or something? Well, not one that'll get you to San Antonio by 1 o'clock. Oh. Sir, could you take me? Are you going to San Antonio? Me? Yes, I've just got to be there. I've got an appointment and I can't miss it. Well, why don't you give the lady a lift, mister? You've got an empty car. Well, sure. Sure, it'd be a pleasure, miss. Oh, thank you very much. You don't know what a favor this is. I've got to be there. Come back tomorrow for the car. Is that all right? Sure, it'll be ready any time tomorrow. Uh, that'll be 206, mister. Yeah, sure. Here you are. Thanks. There's no leak in that radiator. The water was drained out. Peters, this may be it. You are listening to the case of the infiltrating agents on Counter Spy. Have you met our new baby yet? I mean NBC's new baby, The Big Show. And what a baby it is. The biggest baby you ever heard. And he's not crying either. Why should he with stars like Tallulah Bankhead, Jimmy Durante, Clifton Webb, Mindy Carson, Meredith Wilson, and a host of others to make him radio's greatest spectacle ever? This Sunday and every Sunday, meet The Big Show. An hour and a half of comedy, music, and drama. All this and Tallulah too. No wonder it's The Big Show. And Sunday evening over most of these same NBC stations also means the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show 
with Frankie, Julius, and the entire cast. Now, back to Counter Spy. San Antonio Counter Spy Field Office. Now, this is Harding. Peter stopped at point 14, filling station. Car drove up with a steaming radiator and a girl, 5'4", 120 pounds, 25 years old, got out and hitched a ride to San Antonio with Peters in his car. That looks like it. It does. Check on the license of the car she left here. The 1949 Plymouth two-door painted maroon, Texas license, 3T152. Okay, Mr. Harding. Now get that information out to all cars. Because if she's one of the rings, she might try to pull a gun on Peters between here and San Antonio. Take over his car. Right. I'm turning the filling station back to the owner right away and joining the parade. But keep shooting out bulletins over the air. We're getting close. What would a pretty girl like you be in such a hurry to get to San Antonio for, Miss White? Oh, I've got an appointment. What kind of an appointment? Just an appointment. Okay. Just thought maybe I'd be entitled to know. Well, you are, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll mind my own business. You're sweet, Mr. Peters. Harry. Oh, very sweet. Harry. Where do you live? In Dallas. Where do you live? In San Antonio. They're too far apart. Dallas and San Antonio. I guess they are. Oh, there's a nice lunch stand coming up. Would you like to get some coffee? I thought you were in a hurry to get to San Antonio. Well, I am, but a few minutes won't hurt. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt me. It's really a very nice place. I've been there before. It must be. It's kind of busy. Oh, a lot of people who travel between San Antonio and Laredo know it. Oh. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, uh, I was kind of hoping you'd want to stop. I thought, though, that you were in too much of a hurry. Oh, well, I'm never in too much of a hurry for a cup of coffee. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, let's sit at the counter. It's quicker, shall we? Okay. You're the boss. Hey, Joe, come over here. It's all right? Oh, this is fine. You draw water, too. Yeah, folks, what's your pleasure? I'll have a cup of coffee and, um... Oh, do you have a menu? Menu's on the wall, lady. Oh. Um... A sweet roll. A cup of coffee and a sweet roll. All right. Mister? I'll have the same. Draw to you. Pastry fair. What do you do, Mr. Peters? The name is just plain Harry, and I do fine. <laughs> I mean, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm in the dairy business. Oh, that's nice. Here you are, folks. Two coffees and a couple of sweet rolls. Thank you. Would you like some sugar? Hey, buddy. What's the matter? Do you drive up here in a black Oldsmobile? Yes, one. Well, somebody's driving off in it, and it ain't you. This is Gloria. Let me talk to Mr. Sanderson. <laughs> oh, Harry. Did you get hold of your father, Gloria? Well, they're calling him to the phone. Oh, good. I'm really terribly sorry. Oh, oh well, here's Gloria. my father. Excuse me, Harry. Hello, Mr. Sanderson. Well, how's it going, Gloria? Oh, very well, like clockwork. <laughs> Did uh, Jimmy get the car? Yes, he drove it off about five minutes ago. You don't think the man has any knowledge? Oh, he doesn't know a thing. Can you uh, lose him? He's already lost. A very convenient truck driver offered me a ride into San Antonio. <laughs> good. Very good. I'll see you in about an hour. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that. Your father isn't worried, I hope. Oh, no, he's not worried. You know... I don't like the idea of you riding to San Antonio in a truck. Well, I've got to get there some way, and the man was kind enough to... Why don't you come along with us, Harry? Oh, I'd love to, but the state police said wait here until the highway patrol comes, so I guess I'd better wait for a report on the car. Oh, yes, I forgot all about that. Hey, lady, if you want to ride with me, you'd better come on. I operate on a strict schedule. Yeah, I'll be right with you. Uh, goodbye, Harry. Oh, wait a minute. Look, uh... Where can I find you in San Antonio? Oh, you don't want to find me, Harry. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. There, there's something I didn't tell you. It wasn't my father on the phone. It was my husband. Oh. Goodbye, Harry. Peters. 
Hello, Mr. Harding. You got the whole story, Peter? Yes, I phoned in. Was someone able to stay behind my car? Michael stuck with it all the way. He reported a short, curly-haired man about 30 grabbed it. Uh-huh. I didn't get a look at him. Well, he drove up the highway to a few miles north of Divine. Pulled off on a side road. Mm-hmm. He apparently lifted the stuff out of the back seat. And five minutes later, a Ford drove up. Michael reported the curly-haired man got in, headed for San Antonio. The timing is perfect. Yeah. Well, what about the girl? Well, Joan's truck pulled into the restaurant, and he put on a big act of sympathy and offered her a ride to San Antonio, and she took it. Mm-hmm. Good for Jones. We'll hear from him just as soon as he drops her. She won't get out any place near where she's going. Well, there's an agent behind Jones, isn't there? Yes. He'll pick her up on foot. Now, we checked on the car that she left behind at the filling station. It was rented at San Antonio. Oh. Well, I guess we're getting right on top of it, Peters. We sure are, Dave. And we better nail them this time. We'll get them. This is their last trip. Yes? Who is it? It's me, Gloria. Well, hello, Gloria. (laughs) Mr. Sanderson. (laughs) Come in, come in. Well, how'd you like that for turning a trick? It came off very well. The poor man never knew what hit him. He'll find his car in a few hours. He'll go on back to Dallas and write the whole thing off as a streak of bad luck. Uh, Where did the uh, truck driver leave you? Well, I told him I wanted to get out near the Gunther. He pulled that big 10-ton truck right up in front of the hotel and dropped it. Now, you're you're, uh, positive no one was behind you. Oh, no one. I walked three blocks, hopped a cab, and here I am. (laughs) Good, good work. Did Jimmy bring the package in on me? Oh, yes. Yes. Here it is. Oh, that's wonderful. We'll get the films moving east by tonight. And by Monday, they'll be spread to every agent of ours in the country. We're a step ahead of these people every foot of the way. Nothing will stop us, Gloria, nothing. I never doubted anything would. All right, now. Let's get ready to move out. I want to be on our way east in an hour. that stuff twice a week and never be... San Antonio to car C5. I'll take that. Harding, San Antonio. Go ahead. Meeker reports curly-haired suspect who took car trailed the following address in San Antonio. 1842 Del Rosa. 1842 Del Rosa. That's right, Mr. Harding. Suspect entered the house with a suitcase apparently containing contraband. Left house five minutes later without the suitcase. What kind of house is it, San Antonio? A two-story house. Frame affair. Front and back entrance. Suspect entered first floor door. Second floor has apparently unconnected occupant. Yeah, the house covered? Meeker's on the spot. I'm heading there, too. Okay, good. Now tell uh, Meeker... Just a minute, Miss Harding. I wonder what's up, Chief. Johnson just checked in. He followed the girl from the Gunther Hotel to the same address. That's more than coincidence, Chief. Okay, San Antonio. Keep all agents on the spot. We're headed there right away. All right, Peter. See if you can get some speed out of this thing. There's Jones, Mr. Harding. Yeah. Uh, Jones. Hello, Chief. Peters. That's it. The yellow frame house across the street. Oh. They're on the first floor. Where you got the men posted? Meeker and Johnson are back in the alley. I got a pair up on the street in the car. Evans is standing in a doorway on this side. Any idea who the occupant is? Yeah, we checked around. Couldn't get much of a line on him. He moved in about a week ago. Neighbors say he's a big man. I haven't seen him much. Is he in there, Jones? Yeah. He opened up the door for both the curly-haired suspect and the girl. All right. Let's go. You go up to the door with me, Peters. You follow us up, Jones. Okay. Give the boys a high sign. We're going to move in. Okay. They got it, and they're ready. All right, Jones. Come up behind us. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Now, you knock, Peters. I'll cover you. Right. be glad to wind this one up. So will I. Knock again. Yes, who is it? It's me. You? Who are you? (gasps) Hello, Miss White. Surprise. Harry, how did you... I did. We're United States counter spies. We know that there's a man... Watch it! That's him! 
Sanderson. Yeah. Oh. You got it, Peter. Come on. Oh, you, you hit me. You hit me. Get, get me a doctor, will you? All right, Sanderson. Take oh. it easy. We'll get you a doctor. I'm hit. I'm hit bad. I... I need a doctor. What did you do to him? What did you do to him? Anderson's all right, lady. He's not hurt bad. There are the films, Chief. All ready to go. Yes, and the only place they're going is where we're taking them. And the only place these people are going is where we're putting them. Come on, all of you, let's go. This is David Harding. Here's a statement by the Honorable J. Edgar Hoover, Director, Federal Bureau of Investigation. The President of the United States, in restating the responsibilities of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, has called upon all law enforcement officers, patriotic organizations, and individuals to report information pertaining to espionage, sabotage, and subversive activities to the FBI. The following suggestions are made to assist patriotic organizations and individuals in complying with the President's request. Be alert. Learn to know the enemies of the American way of life. If you suspect sabotage, espionage, or subversive activities, communicate with the nearest office of the FBI and furnish all facts in your possession. Once you have reported your information to the FBI, do not circulate rumors or endeavor to make private investigations. Leave the investigations to trained investigators who have access to data acquired over the years on individuals engaged in subversive activities. The internal security of the United States can best be assured with the cooperation, aid, and assistance of every law-abiding person in our nation. Tune in every week, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next week for the exciting case of the invisible insurrectionist. Behind the nationwide headlines of a recent murder attempt lies a strange story of a certain organization to whom misery was a necessity and treason a way of earning a living. How your counter spies answered this challenge by proving that charity doesn't always begin at home will be revealed for the first time next week in Case of the Invisible Insurrectionist on Counter Spy. <laughs> Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marks B. Loeb, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Lionel Rico speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.